click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hi friends, in the previous lecture we have got to know about the important components of carbon and that were carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So similarly we are going to talk about the important components of the silicon. So there are various components of silicon and uh, now we are going to talk about that is silicon dioxide. So now let us discuss about that. So there are various compounds of the silicon, various important compounds of silicon uh, that could be silicone, that could be silicon dioxide, quartz and uh, we could say like uh, zeolites etc. So now in this topic we are going to talk about that is silicon dioxide. So what are the different properties of silicon dioxide even that is what we are going to talk about in this lecture. So now let me talk about that is silicon and uh, with respect to that of the carbon. So as we know that carbon is the one that is been uh, that is the first element of the group 14 and silicon is the one that is the second uh, uh, element of the group 14. So in this case basically the both are having a difference also. Carbon which is the one that has a valency of 4 but uh, it cannot extend its coordination number. So similarly silicon has also had a coordination number of 4 but this silicon can extend its coordination number because it has a valency uh, that it has a uh, d orbitals in its uh, uh, electronic configuration whenever we write so that's the reason that because of the presence of d orbitals we could say that it can extend its uh, coordination number from four to five and somewhere six also so now this is what i'm going to talk about and uh, talking about uh, that is uh, silicon dioxide so silicon dioxide is uh, formed whenever silicon combines with that of the two oxygen but this is not uh, a compound where we could find that is silicon is forming a double bond with that of oxygen like that of the carbon which is forming double bond with oxygen in carbon dioxide. The reason why that is because carbon is the one that can show a catenation process and that is how that it can form a double bond with the other electronegative compounds like oxygen or nitrogen. But in case of silicon, silicon doesn't form a double bond with that of the other silicon or with another oxygen or uh, an electronegative element. So that is the reason that it will form a single bond only and the bond will be a covalent bond. So let me discuss about uh, this thing uh, that how basically the silicon dioxide has been formed and uh, what is the structure behind uh, that. So if we compare it with uh, the silicon and uh, the oxygen. So it has been found that the silicon is the one that has an electronegativity of 1.8 while that of the oxygen it has an electronegativity of that is uh, 3.5. So because of which basically the bond that uh, creates between the silicon and oxygen is basically it is ionic in nature but somewhere silicon doesn't form only with one oxygen bond it forms with other oxygen atoms also and the bond that uh, forms or the compound that forms because of the SiO2 is basically covalent in nature and that's the reason that SiO2 cannot be dissolvable in water. So this is what I want to talk about and uh, let me discuss about this thing that is uh, suppose if I talk about the structure of uh, SiO2. So silicon is the one that can form that is uh, it can form uh, 4 bond or it has a valency of 4. So that is how I am representing over here. While each silicon as I have mentioned over here is been surrounded by that is the oxygen atoms. So therefore this is the one that has been surrounded by oxygen atom even this also. This also. But talking about the oxygen atoms, the oxygen atoms is also combined uh, or it has been associated with the silicon. So if we talk about this oxygen, then this oxygen has been associated with this silicon. So therefore it can be uh, that is combined with uh, or, or it can form a bond with the other silicon also. So this is what I want to talk about. And even the silicon has a coordination number of 4 in this case. So here basically it is forming uh, a bond with the other oxygen atom and that is this one. So if we talk about this oxygen atom, again it has a valency of 2 that is what we know and that's the reason that oxygen forms uh, 2 bonds. It can be double bond also but in this case because as we have mentioned earlier that is uh, it forms a single bond that's the reason that uh, it can be bonded with the silicon. And again here will be oxygen that would be present. And again ultimately we could say that there will be presence of silicon over here so therefore this is the structure that it goes on and that's the reason that uh, silicon dioxide has a basically a 3d network structure and in which basically every uh, atom is being tetrahedrally arranged in such a manner that uh, uh, we could get a uh, 
a various a crystal like structure and that is the reason that uh, SiO2 basically it is a it is like that of a quartz because quartz is also an example of a silicon dioxide so even that is a pure crystal that is what we know so the structure goes on in such a manner and that is what we could find uh, that is a ring and in this case the ring consists of an eight atoms and those eight atoms as we could see over here is basically one two three four five six seven eight so this kind of uh, structure it goes on and the network of this kind of structure it increases and it is widely expanded and that's the reason that silicon dioxide is a very uh, stable compound and this stable compound uh, helps it to basically uh, uh, to not show that much of chemical reactivity with uh, any of the other chemicals and uh, that is what I want to talk about so talking about the uh, other chemical reaction that could be given by silicon dioxide so let me talk about the uh, that is properties or the physical properties because this SiO2 because it is very crystalline in uh, structure and that's the reason that uh, it is used in uh, uh, making of rocks and in clocks also basically quartz are being used because quartz is basically made up of SiO2 and uh, that is what it is a, a, it is acting like a piezoelectric material and that is I mean uh, useful in uh, making of uh, in making of uh, clocks and uh, basically watches also it has been used and uh, talking about the chemical reactivity in this case so talking about the chemical reactivity so as i said that uh, sio2 cannot be reacted with uh, or it doesn't react with mostly with any kind of uh, that is or it doesn't undergoes a hydrolysis process or it doesn't react with uh, acid or bases but what if we have a certain kind of acid which is very acidic in nature for example SiO2, whenever it is been treated with hydrofluoric acid, that is, and we know that it is a very strong acid, and that's the reason that uh, four moles of HF is been sufficient so as to convert this SiO2 to basically SiF4 plus two moles of H2. So therefore, this undergoes a substitution process, and we get SiF4 or tetrafluorosilicon so this is what we could get and that's the reason that uh, hf is basically it is very much reactive with that of the sio2 that's the reason that uh, uh, the hf is not being uh, contained uh, in sio2 uh, in, a, in a sio2 vessel so and again when it comes to reaction with the base so it has been found that uh, sio2 or silicon dioxide can be treated with the base like naoh and that is how that it can form that is na2 sio3 plus H2 so this kind of reaction that happens and that occurs and this where the chemical properties that were been exhibited by the SiO2 or silicon dioxide so that's it this is what I want to talk about so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood uh, a few uh, properties as well as the chemical properties of uh, that is silicon dioxide and that's it so in the further lecture we are going to talk about the other important components of silicon so for now I hope you will have understood this lecture very clearly and you will share this video with your friends and just don't forget to subscribe you get our channel thank you so much